Welcome to the realm of astrology. This is your daily horoscope for June 22nd, 2021, which is a Tuesday. But before we begin, I would like to let you know that I do daily video horoscopes that I post on my YouTube channel every single day. I do weekly video horoscopes that I post every single week. And I also do monthly horoscopes and monthly sunrise and sign horoscopes that I post on my YouTube channel every month as well. You can watch all of those. And I do request you to hit the subscribe button Hit the bell icon so that you'd be notified whenever I post a video. All right, so let's talk about what's happening today and let's begin with midnight. So I'm talking about midnight Pacific time and this becomes 12 p.m. or 12.30 p.m. Indian Standard Time. So a lot of requests have come in for me to include both times. So I'm going to do that in every video from now on. So it's midnight Pacific time, 12 p.m. India time. All right, moving on. And what's happening then? What's happening then is that the moon here is going to sextile Pluto, 60 degree angle. Now, this is a positive angle. This is a positive healing, positive transformation, positive catharsis to our emotions. And this could very well be connected to something very intimate in our lives, something connected, something very karmic. And this happens at midnight Pacific time. 12 p.m. India time, give or take. And moving on at 6 a.m., I'm going to move the chart. Let me clean it up. At 6 a.m. today, the moon is going to change signs. All right, so let's see that. The moon's entered the sign of Sagittarius. This is 6 a.m. Pacific time, 6 p.m. India time. And the moon changes signs every two and a half days and when it changes signs, the energy in our life shifts in very subtle ways. The focus of our life shifts in very subtle ways. So for, for the past two and a half days, the energy was very intense. Scorpio is an intense sign. It's all about changing things. It's all about transforming things. It's also about finding healing. And that's Scorpio energy. And now in Sagittarius, the energy is going to shift to a lot of fun, a lot of adventure, a lot of hope, optimism, happiness, having fun because Sagittarius is the most hopeful, optimistic, happy sign of the zodiac. So that's what's, what we are going to be focused on for the next two and a half days. However, the moon in Sagittarius does make a few difficult aspects. So let's talk about that. And the first one happens at 9 a.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. India time. And that is that or about 10 a.m., yeah, 10 a.m. Pacific time, 10 p.m. India time, is that the moon here is going to square Jupiter. Jupiter is the ruler of Sagittarius. And the moon is squaring the ruler of the sign that it's in. And this is a moment where we can feel a lack of optimism, a lack of hope, a sort of nothing's going my way, nothing's panning out. And this could very well be connected to something that happened in the recent past, maybe in the past 10 days or so, because Jupiter is retrograde. So that, that happens. And alternatively, it could be something that we change or adjust or, or overcome, connected to a belief system, foreign travel, something connected to that. We make a small adjustment because they're in a square and the moon does, is the influencer of our moment to moment reality, you can say, our moods. So this is a moment where either one, you will feel, you might feel rather, you might feel a little lack of hope, a little like less optimistic, a little like, okay, something's not working out. And this could very well be connected to something that took place in the past 10 days. Or it could be an adjustment that you need to make do feel hopeful, a change that you need to need to make after which you will regain that hope, regain that optimism. And again, this is connected to something that happened about in the past one week or 10 days. And that happens at about 10 a.m. Pacific time, 10 p.m. India time. All right, moving on, moving on. I should have spoken about this. No, moving on, moving on to 2 p.m. Let's talk about that. What's happening? This is the biggest deal of the day. And you can see Mercury in red is in retrograde. And if I move the chart up to 3 p.m. 
it comes out of retrograde. So at about 3 p.m. Pacific time, 3 a.m. June 23rd India time, Mercury is going to come out of retrograde. And this is a great thing. Why? Because when Mercury is retrograde, communication slows down, we can get confused. It's a time to reprocess things from the past. Uh, it's not the best time to start new things, sign contracts, things like that. And it can also be a very confusing time. And Mercury has been retrograde since May 29th. So since May 20, 29th, there could have been a lot of confusion. There could have been a lot of review and reprocessing of things that happened in the past. And like I said, communication suffers during this period. Gadgets can malfunction during this period. So now as Mercury comes out of retrograde on June 22nd, clarity will come. We will not be reprocessing the past, but we will be forging our path for the future. So that's happening at 3 p.m. Pacific time, 3 a.m. June 23rd, India time. And this will ease up the confusion that we have been feeling, if we have been feeling it. Alternatively, in some cases, what happens, especially if you're born with Mercury retrograde, it, if you are born with Mercury retrograde, you, your mind functions better when Mercury is retrograde. So it depends, but the population that's born with Mercury retrograde is rare. It's about, I think, 10%, if I'm not mistaken. So for the general, um, for the majority of the people, Mercury coming out of the retrograde is a great thing. All right. And then soon after Mercury comes out of retrograde, let me move the chart, the moon is going to trine Mars. So it, it's a very, very positive day so far. It's been a very positive day, barring the moon squaring Jupiter aspect. So let's see that. Let's see Mars. Mars is here at seven degrees and it is trining the moon 120 degree angle. Now this is a positive, positive, positive aspect. We are feeling very good about taking action, moving forward, finding the courage to move forward. So it's a positive thing. And with fire, fire makes things happen. They're both in fire signs. In this case, we will be making things happen. We will be moving forward. And this comes soon after, soon after the square to Jupiter. Remember the square to Jupiter? where we needed to adjust something, change something to feel hopeful again. Perhaps that change has made us feel hopeful. And by the evening, we find a really positive energy within us to move forward, to take that action, to make things happen. And this is 6 p.m. Pacific time. So about 6 a.m. Uh, India time, June 23rd. It's a 12, 12 and a half hour difference. So you can do the math if I forget to mention it in the future. All right. Now, moving on, moving on, there are two, three more things happening today. Like I said, June 22nd, June 21st, which was yesterday, was the easy day. Not much was happening, but today a lot is happening. So let's talk about the next thing. The next thing that happens is that the moon's going to conjunct the North Node. All right, so let's see that on the chart. And this happens at about 10 p.m. Pacific time. So about 10 a.m. India time, June 23rd. And what's happening is that the moon and the south node are conjunct. Now, this is not the easiest energy, I'm going to be honest with you. The south node drains anything that comes in contact with. The north node energizes any planet it comes in contact with, and the south node drains it. So in this case, we might feel emotionally drained, we might feel emotionally tired. And it's also a moment where we might reconnect with the past. Because the South Node is what we are leaving behind. So, and sometimes connecting with the past can be an emotionally training experience, especially if it's a memory of the past that's not very positive. So at about 10 p.m. Pacific time, 10 a.m. India time, June 23rd, we might feel tired, we might feel trained, we might feel not the best about something connected to the past. Yeah. So, so just be mindful of that and the energy, the moon moves so fast that we only feel the energy for a couple of hours. So, you know, just, just let the energy pass because 
soon after that, soon after that, we do have a positive thing happening. So let's see that on the chart. Okay, one moment. Yeah. So at about 11 p.m. Pacific time, 11 a.m. India time, June 23rd, the sun is going to trine Jupiter. Now, this is a big deal. Sun and Jupiter contacts are very powerful and they are very, very positive, especially when they're in a positive aspect like this one. This is a trine 120 degree angle. And this could be a soul being filled with hope, with optimism, with joy, our consciousness finding that hope, optimism and joy, something in our identity making us very hopeful for the future. And since, since the sun is in Cancer, I would say this is very deeply connected to us. This is very intimate to us, whatever this positive moment is, whatever the positive thing that is happening for your identity, your consciousness, your soul is, it's intimate. And, and I, I think it's more internal than in the real world because Cancer is the sign of going within it's all internal you know the fourth house is the internal stuff it's your it's your home it's your family it's your foundation it's your roots it's where you come from it's your deepest emotions and the fourth house is ruled by cancer so that's cancer energy all about the internal all about this little world that we build within the shell within our shell cancer is ruled by the crab the crab has a shell and underneath that shell it feels safe and secure so Something connected to our home, our family, our foundation, our deepest emotions will be infused with a lot of joy, a lot of optimism, or perhaps maybe even knowledge and wisdom. So that's at 11 p.m. So that's, that's the energy of the day. And to sum up the day, I would say it's a day where the confusion will begin to ease off because Mercury will come out of retrograde. It is a more hopeful, happy, positive energy than it has been in the past two and a half days because the moon has entered Sagittarius. At the same time, we will need to make an adjustment with when the moon squares Jupiter, some adjustment to make us feel hopeful and happy again. And there might be a moment at about 10 p.m. Pacific time, next morning, India time, 10 a.m., where we feel a little drained in our energy, where we may have some memories connected to the past that we need to let go of. And then with the Sun, Jupiter, Trine, it's a very, very, very positive, happy moment for our identity, soul, consciousness, and I believe it's internal. It's connected to the deepest part of us, and that could be our emotions, that could be our family. That's all I'm going to say. I do want to mention, however, that we are building up into the full moon in Capricorn, which is going to happen at three degrees of Capricorn. We are also building up to um, Venus and Pluto opposition. Now, this is going to be a powerful moment, and we are also building up to that retrograde on June 25th. So a lot of things we are building up to. And if you watch me regularly, you know that the build up is where we feel the energy the most. Once it comes exact, once the energy peaks out, then it starts to ease off. So right now, again, we are building to the full moon. We are building to Venus, Pluto opposition. We are building to Neptune going retrograde. So we'll be feeling a lot of, lot of, lot of things. And now I'll give you a brief background on what's been happening in the astrology. And this is like, the underlying layer, the, the deep currents of what's been going on in the background. Because yes, energy changes day to day, moment to moment, with the moon, with Mercury, with Mars and Venus and all those things. However, there are certain underlying themes that last longer. Now, these are those themes that I will mention. If you've seen this, please skip to the card reading. And if you've not seen this, I urge you to watch at least once. So the first thing I talk about is the Saturn-Pluto conjunction, these planets planets met up in Jan of 2020 and they meet up once in 33 to 38 years and so they met up in Jan of 2020 after 38 years which is a big deal they ended a cycle of 38 years a cycle that started in 1982 and when they met up in Jan of 2020 our material reality shifted in a very powerful way something in our life shifted in a very powerful way and you can look at 22 degrees of Capricorn in your chart to know where that shift happened, which house. 
So now, especially with the full moon in Capricorn, we will begin to really understand what that change was all about. And this cycle that started in Jan of 2020, we will build till 2050 for the next two years or the next year or so. And it will stay with us till 2053, till Saturn and Pluto meet again in the sign of Pisces. And the next thing I want to mention is that Saturn and Jupiter, they met up in December of 2020. And these planets also conjunct only once in 20 years. So they started a new 20 year cycle and ended a new uh, and ended an old 20 year cycle in December of 2020. This new cycle will stay with us till about 2040 and we will lay the foundation for this cycle in the next two years. Look at zero degrees of Aquarius in your chart and that's where you'll see where this new cycle is taking place, which house. And the third thing I want to mention is the Saturn Uranus square. Now this is an extremely rare event as well. It happened 21 years ago, it's happening again. And this energy is all about getting rid of all things that don't serve us. This, these could be thought processes, these could be patterns, these could be um, relationships that have run their course, these could be projects, these could, this, it could be anything. It could be a habit also. And we need to embrace the new. And the new could be anything as well. And it's also about finding your uniqueness, your unique self and embracing that unique self because that is the most important thing. If you embrace who you truly are, the old will fall away and the new will automatically come in. So the key to navigate the Saturn Uranus square, I would say is just be you. As easy as that sounds, it's one of the most hardest things to do, being you. Not caring about what people say, not caring about what anybody thinks, not caring about what you think you should be, but being who you are, it's one of the hardest things to do. But doing that is how to navigate this energy. And the last thing I will mention are the nodes. The North Node is in Gemini and the South Node is in Sag. And they were in the same placement, Gemini and Sag, between 2001 and 2003. And the nodes are karmic. So whatever happened in your life around 2001, 2003, similar themes might come into your life back for you to review, reprocess or build on. And the notes have been here since 2020. So it could have been happening since 2020, May, May of 2020. And now that's all the background I will give. I will pick a card for the day and then we'll close out the reading. Happy, happy. I think this card says it all right. Look at how happy she is. And I did say that it's going to be a happier, happier, a lighter, a more optimistic energy than it has been in the past two and a half days because the moon is in Sagittarius. Sagittarius is the most happy sign. It is the most hopeful sign. It is the most optimistic sign. And I think today is a day of happiness. A lot of positive aspects are taking place. Moon is trining Mars. A lot of positive feeling to our courage, to how we take action, to our soul with the Sun, Jupiter trying. It's a positive, positive, happy day. And I'm not going to ruin this card by saying anything more. Just it's a happy day. And we might need to make one or two adjustments. But overall, it's all about being happy today. And I, and I think uh, Mercury coming out of retrograde will also make us happy because things will begin to move on like they used to before May 29th. So have a great happy day and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye.